Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we are going to be tackling lead code number 283, move zeros. This is classified as an easy problem. We'll start by reading through the description here. Given an array called nums, write a function to move all zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. And it's giving us an example. If we have an input list of 0, 1, 0, 3, 12, the output then needs to be 1, 3, 12, 0, 0. So basically what it's done here is taken all the zeros, there are two zeros here, one there and one there, and shifted them to the end, so all the two zeros are at the end, and then everything else is at the beginning. And the thing, the three numbers at the beginning are also in the same order that they were in the original input. So one is first, three is second, 12 is third. Let me have a couple of notes here. Note one, you must do this in place without making a copy of the original array. Note two, minimize the total number of operations. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean because the goal of these is always to try to make something fairly efficient, but that suggests if it's not efficient enough, maybe it's not going to pass the grader. So let's pull over and first pull up our whiteboard to see how we might be able to approach this problem in code. So let's start with that practice array they gave in the example and see how we might deal with this problem algorithmically. So we had zero, one, zero, and I think three, 12. And what we need to do is end up with these two zeros here at the end, and everything else has to be essentially shifted forward. So the way that we have to deal with this sort of problem is, I suppose, loop through the array, and then any time we come across a zero or a one, we'll have to shift or swap it in some way. So what would be the best way to do that? Now the important thing to get right here is that the non-zero elements have to remain in the same order. So swapping those in order into the correct positions at the beginning of the array is probably going to be the most difficult part about this. So what we should be thinking about doing is looping through the array and anytime we see something that isn't a zero, we want to swap it into the next slot in at the beginning of the array that we haven't seen yet. So basically we want to be keeping track. So, so far index zero would be our first thing. Then we would want to check, okay, we need to put something that's not zero. The next thing that's not zero needs to go in that zero position. Well, this first, the thing that's actually in there is zero, so we don't want to do anything with that. But this one is our first thing that's not zero. That means it has to be the first thing in the ending array. So we'd want to swap that into the zero position. So we'd have the one here. Then we could continue our loop going forward. The next thing is zero, so that doesn't need to be shifted forward because that needs to go at the end. The next thing is a three. So in this case, that is not a zero. We'd have to shift that forward into the next slot after the one. So we'd have to put that here. And we check the next thing, that's a 12, that also needs to be shifted forward. So we'd put that in the next open spot after the three, which would go here. And then we'd end up with the non-zero elements at the beginning in the proper order. All we really need to do after that is fill in any remaining slots here with zeros. So we know after we've looped through the entire array and shifted forward any non-zero elements into the appropriate index position, any leftover amounts, basically the amount of zeros that are in the entire array at the beginning, we can just fill that number of zeros at the end of the array here. So we would insert zeros into these two slots at the end. So what are the different things we're going to have to keep track of in order to code this up? We're going to have to have a main loop that goes through the array we're going to have to keep track of the index position 
that we want to insert the next non-zero element into. So we're, it's to start off with, it's going to be zero. But every time we make one of these swaps and swap a non-zero element forward into the next position, this will have to be incremented by one to keep track of that next spot. So at the end, we'll also need to know how many zeros we actually need to insert after we have the non-zero elements in order at the beginning. So that's something we can do just by counting up how many zeros there are at the beginning. So I think we have a reasonable approach to the problem now. So let's pull back into the code editor on lead code here and see what we can do about coding up the solution. So we are given a list of nums and we said that we needed to keep track of how many zeros there are so that we can insert that many at the end of the operation. So let's just start off by counting how many zeros there are. We'll say zero count equals nums.count zero. So that will count up how many zeros there are and that tells us how many zeros we'll have to put at the end. Now we also have to keep track of the index position of the next non-zero element where we need to insert the next swap into. So at first that's just going to be the first or zeroth index, but as we go through this will be incremented to keep track of what the next index we're going to swap into is going to be. Now we can make our main loop. So for n in nums, and we only need to make swaps when we find something that's not a zero. So if n is not equal to zero, that means we have to do something. So what we want to do is insert n into this next non-zero index position. So nums next non-zero will equal our current n because when n isn't equal to zero, we want to shift it to that next position. If it is a zero, then this line will be skipped and it will just keep going until it finds the next non-zero thing to insert. And we also then, after we insert something, have to increment this next non-zero by one so that we are moving to that next spot and not overwriting what we just did. So plus equals one. And so this should loop through and shift all of the non-zero elements into the beginning of the array. Now, after running this for loop, all that's left to do is fill the rest of the array that comes after the non-zero elements, set everything after that to zero. And we already kept track of how many zeros there should be. So we just have to loop through those index positions and set them all to zero. And since we want to insert the zeros at the end of the nums array, we're actually going to want to make a loop over the number of zeros, but fill it from the end. So we'll have to do minus an index to do that. So for zero in range, let's say one, because we, we need a negative index that actually means something, and uh, there's no negative zero index. So if we want to get the last thing in the array, we need to start at the negative one index. So range one, because we're going to end up using a negative here, range one to the count of zeros. So zero count um, plus one, because we need to go all the way up to and including the zero count. We will set nums of negative zero equal to zero. So basically what this is doing is it's counting back from the end of the nums array by indices. So negative zero, it's starting off with negative one, that gets you the final index, and we're gonna set that to zero. And then we just keep doing that, counting backwards for as many zeros as we have to insert. So once this for loop is done here, it will have gone through and inserted as many zeros as there were in the original nums array. So once that is done, and we've gotten through both of the for loops, we should have ended up with our final array that has all of the zeros shifted to the end and all of the non-zero elements shifted to the beginning in order. So let's go ahead and click submit on this one and pull over to the submission screen. Seems to be taking some time here. 
we got a runtime of 48 milliseconds this time, faster than 87.27% of Python 3 submissions. So that seemed like a reasonably decent one in terms of run speed. There might have been a slightly smarter way to structure, for instance, inserting the zeros at the end. But overall, this should have been an O of N runtime solution because we only looped through the N array once. And then we, we did have another for loop, but that's only going to do at most N more operations. So it's on the order of n still even if you do 2n operations so that seemed reasonably good and we avoided doing any kind of double nested for loops that would have potentially resulted in say, say an n squared runtime solution so i hope you found this explanation to be useful thanks for watching and keep coding